my name is Brian Gutierrez. I'm a junior here at University of Houston and I'm majoring in biomedical engineering. And I'll be talking to you all today about the NSPE Code of Ethics. So, like you all, you might be wondering what is the Code of Ethics or what is NSPE? I didn't know what NSPE was either before this class. So NSPE stands for the National Society of Professional Engineers. And it was founded in 1934 with the goal in mind to help the public and engineers create a ethical environment and for a sort of professional standard for engineers to follow. And this ties in with their, their vision, which is to, for the public to be able to trust engineers, knowing that they are professional and ethical in what they do. And this is with the mission of the NSP, which is to provide society with adequate and exceptional engineers. And how did they do this? They did this by using the code of ethics. And the code of ethics is a type of guidelines that all engineers should follow. It's guidelines that include professionalism and ethics and this is required because engineers, they deal with society all the time. They have to, the type of work they do impacts society in a big way. And when it comes to, when it comes to dealing with society and jobs that impact society in a big way that they command a next level of ethics and professionalism. Now, this is broken down into three parts called the fundamental canons, the rules of practice, and professional obligations. And the rule I'm gonna be talking about is rule number five called engineers shall avoid deceptive acts. And this rule is broken down into two parts, part A and part B. Part A talks about, part A talks about a lot of uh, misrepresentation and falsification. So misrepresentation is here means uh, no misrepresentation of your abilities, of your responsibilities, uh, no misrepresentation of facts, which includes who your employers are, who your employees are, and your associates. So whenever I see the word misrepresentation in this, uh, in this part, I think lying. So you could replace the word misrepresentation with lying. So it's saying no lying about your qualifications, no lying about duties or responsibilities, no lying about facts that include him, who your employees are, who your employers are. And I think this ties in with another rule, which is rule number two, which is engineers shall only perform tasks in their in, of their competence, of their area of competence. So one way for, so this that role basically means that a civil engineer won't be able to do something that a chemical engineer would do. They can't just walk in there and say, oh, I can do what a chemical engineer does because I'm an engineer. It's not how it works. And so one of the ways this is avoided is by engineers not lying or not misrepresenting what their qualifications are, what they can do. Instead, they have to be honest of what they can't do and act with integrity. Now, part B is talks about no, no giving commission, no giving any type of, you know, giving any type of influence in order to secure a type of job or a type of contract. Now, this basically means no bribing. So this could be monetary value, such as a percent of your work or a, a type of commission, but this also could be items like gifts or services. Now, this also ties in with another rule, which is in the professional obligations, rule number five, which says engineers shall not receive any economic type of influence. So part B here talks about the engineer
engineer not giving any work, not giving any commission. And then rule number five of professional obligations is talking about not receiving any of any type of monetary influence. So these those two rules together really work together to ensure that there's no bribing happening when doing engineers and this really helps keep the integrity of engineers intact. Now all of these rules in the code of ethics are made for that reason, are made to help engineers uh, keep a certain guidelines, keep them in line so that their job stays with integrity so that they can keep the professionalism. That's it. Thank you.